Good afternoon. I hope that you enjoyed Alessandra's session. Um, I certainly did. Um, I go to her uh, quite regularly. She's a great massage therapist, really knows her stuff. And doing that, you know, that facial reflexology definitely is one of my favorite techniques to calm myself down and uh, even to uh, even to sleep really i loved what she said about like being the protagonist of your own well-being because that's also what you're going to learn with me today so hi in case you missed the introduction this morning my name is asha singh i am a gestalt psychotherapist a mindfulness-based cognitive therapy practitioner and a meditation coach i've been teaching and working with people for a number of years and today I'm going to speak to you a little bit about mindfulness meditation. So um, my area of specialty is basically focusing on um, a science and clinical based method of teaching meditation. I'm aware that many people do it as part of yoga, as part of a spiritual practice, which is great, it's super cool. Uh, but when I teach courses, I focus on one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do like to speak a little bit about the physiology and how meditation works to calm our systems down, to effectively reprogram our mind for better well-being, uh, less negative thinking, and acting as a support to us rather than getting in the way. So first off, what is mindfulness meditation? Is mindfulness and meditation the same thing or are they different? So this is actually one of the most common questions that I hear. Uh, the main difference between them is meditation is a practice which is focusing on keeping your attention on one thing for a really, really long time. And there are different types of meditation. So um, there's things like chakras, focusing on your chakras, on uh, you know different colors and imagining different colors around your body. There's guided meditation, listening meditation. Um, but mindfulness meditation, um, pretty much uh, mindfulness meditation is a type of meditation that has really hit the scene locally. It's not just for hippies anymore. Everyone is doing it. CEOs, Silicon Valley, um, Forbes have even um, announced it as one of the top things to invest in for corporate and employee well-being, just because it's having so many amazing, amazing results. So what mindfulness meditation is, it is a practice of being present in the here and now. And what that means is that very often when we're thinking about something, we're lost somewhere in our heads. Um, oh man, what am I gonna what am I gonna eat later? Um, what am I <clears throat> sorry, what am I gonna watch on uh, Netflix? And when our attention is focused on um, introspection, thinking, etc. Um, we are not actually here in contact with the world around us, with the life that is passing moment by moment right here, right now. So mindfulness meditation is a practice of being aware of my moment by moment experience primarily through our senses. So using my eyes, I can see the colors um, of the room. Uh, using my ears, I can hear um, my own voice, my breath, the construction that's going out outside. I can smell the breakfast my flatmate just made. Um, um, I can taste, and I have a sense of touch. I can feel my knees and the contact with the ground, the clothes brushing against my skin, um, how my hair just flops from one side to the other, hitting against my face um, as I, I talk rather anim animatedly. So the most popular type of mindfulness meditation is actually focusing on the sensations of the body and then honing into the breath. We focus on the breath because you cannot breathe for the future. So I can't like take a breath, I'm keeping it for tomorrow <laughs> and I can't uh, breathe for yesterday. The, br the breath is a process that is continually happening in the now. So when I train my mind to focus my attention on my breath, I train my mind to focus on the present moment. 
I don't know if that makes sense so far. Any questions you have so far, put them in the comments and I will get back to you later after this video. So, just take a moment really quickly just now to tune into yourself. Look around the room, really feel your body, get inside. What do my feet feel like? What do my legs feel like? What does my bum feel like? A lot of people forget their bum, but fun fact, we actually hold a lot of tension in the buttock area. And it is one of the reasons why um, things like constipation, diarrhea, abdominal upsets are really common during periods of stress. Because people are consciously tensing their muscles. So when we're tense, we're anxious, we're afraid, we, we, we tend to tense up um, and that compromises um, the activity and the workings of our digestive system. So this is another reason why relaxation is part of meditation and it's so beneficial. So, okay, I learned how to meditate, focus on my breath. Why, what's the point of sitting and doing nothing? Um, also, fun fact, meditation is not thinking nothing. It is focusing your attention with an attitude of curiosity. Hmm, what's happening to me right here, right now? How am I manifesting my existence in this body, in this place, and this time? And through practicing this awareness, we start to become aware of how we create our experience. We start to understand the relationship between thoughts, feelings, emotions, and experiences. We start to understand how when I think a thought, my body, my physiology acts as a mirror to reflect that. If I think, oh no, um, what if I catch coronavirus and I die, my body sees that, okay, threat, coronavirus, it doesn't even have to be a real threat, guys, perceived. Everything is about perception. Your reality is not what is really happening, but your perception and interpretation of the event that's happening. So if you perceive a threat, oh my God, for example, you watch, you, you watch the news, you say, oh my God, everyone's getting coronavirus, oh no, oh no, your brain sends a signal down to your body, oi, stress response, perceived threat, woo, 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 alarm bells, and it starts to produce neurotransmitters and hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol, which basically puts your body in full gear, Mad Max style, um, yeah, to fight off the um, potential enemy. The problem is that, I mean, this is a good thing, you know, if you're actually under stress, your body, uh, this will help you, you know, getting that extra energy helps you to run away from a predator, to fight in the case um, of potential attack. But under chronic periods um, of stress, and the body's immune function eventually starts to compromise itself. Um, so that means that your immune system is not working as efficient, which makes you more susceptible to disease in the long term. So this is why meditation has so many be health benefits, because learning to be present with our experience, to relax, to be present with our breath, not needing to be busy all the time, doing things, answering phone calls on Facebook, but learning to be safe and comfortable with what is can be a life-changing practice. Um, speaking also from personal experience, I've been meditating for around eight years and uh, it has truly um, transformed my life, um, definitely for the better. So uh, yeah, that's a brief introduction. Unfortunately, um, I do want to do a demo exercise now. I don't have time to go into the full details about what is the correct posture for meditation, um, what are the three main types of meditation with the most clinical evidence um, to get you feeling happy, focused, um, um, feeling well, feeling happy. Um, so uh, do contact me if you're interested. I do teach courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, yeah, because unfortunately, a half-hour taster session is just not enough to cover so much um, material. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so I see there are quite a few people joining. Yeah, I hope so. I hope that you're, you're enjoying this. So for my demo session, um, I did promise you a five-minute technique to calm down um, anywhere, anytime. 
So one of the biggest issues I see um, with clients is that they tell me, oh, you know, I don't have 20 minutes a day to sit down and do nothing. Or um, you're having a stressful meeting or a, an argument with your in-laws and you can't just kind of, you know, um, disappear for half an hour to go for a walk, to get a massage, to support yourself. But you can, however, take a bathroom break. No one's going to object to you being gone for five minutes. So if you're in a meeting um, or any kind of stressful situation, just check out for five minutes um, and you can do this um, technique there and then. Um, hey, I mean, if you have friends who are into meditation, um, like I do, sometimes, you know, we'll just get together and before we, I don't know, eat or whatever, we'll just meditate together. Um, it is a different experience to meditate in a group, um, especially a group which you have a good synergy with and that you enjoy being with. There's really something powerful in meditating with a group because, because of empathy, because of the way our brains work um, with mirror neurons, we're always picking up and giving off unconscious information to each other. So when people get together in a group um, for meditating, it's actually for most people easier to, to, to meditate. Um, and you kind of you feel the effect more at least that's my personal experience and the experience of most of the clients who have come on my courses um so let's just get right to it yes um damn it's awkward making a live video but anyways so today i want to show you something which is not specifically mindfulness meditation uh, it does start off like that um but it also um involves affirmation now, this type of meditation is known as metta meditation. And the word metta, it comes from Pali, which is the ancient Indo-European, well, in the, in the Indo language, um, uh, which is in all the, the Buddhist canons and all the, the history and teachings from the Buddha uh, came down. Um, for most of you who don't know, meditation is a thousands and thousands of year old, year old practice. Uh, which involved it with a spiritual um, context. Um, so, yep, yeah, fun fact. Um, so, metta actually means loving kindness, um, which is somewhat akin to compassion. Um, compassion can be understood as the empathic realization that someone is suffering, not sympathy, not, oh, I see you, I pity you, poor you, I'm sorry for you, but empathy, I feel your pain coupled with the desire to relieve that suffering, to take some kind of action to somehow make it better, to ameliorate it. Um, and one of my favorite quotes by the Buddha is that we ourselves, just as much as anyone else around us, are deserving of love, kindness, and our own care. So this is what we're going to do right now. <clears throat> So I encourage you, wherever you are, take a moment to sit. Um, it is better than lying down. If you have any kind of back issues, sciatica, postural issues, scoliosis, uh, lie, you feel free to lie down, not on a bed, but on a yoga mat, and use cushions to support underneath your knees um, and the back of your head. For people without postural problems, I do recommend sitting upright, either on a chair with your feet flat on the ground, or you can also do a kind of do a little bit of a Burmese style pose. So when you have your legs um, like this, you want to make sure that your weight is on the base. Um, and you can also do a semi-lotus, um, which is something like that. And putting your feet both like that is known as the full lotus um, position. But it's not super important for this to actually get the position right. You can literally just sit on a chair and you can even sit, you know, if you don't manage that long, sit as long as your spine is upright. That's the only thing. You don't want to crouch down and start to compress all your organs because that will limit the full capacity of your lungs. And that can also create um, anxiety. And, you know, people who are having panic attacks, they breathe only from the top part of the chest. <laughs> the full breath um, from the parasympathetic nervous system, which is basically the relaxation response, it comes full down to your belly. So I invite you to sit with me and take a few deep breaths through the nose and out of the mouth. <sighs> Open your mouth to make an ah sound. Feel that exhalation. 
Ah, okay, wait. I'm gonna sleep again. One of them fell asleep. I've been sitting like this for way too long. Okay, forgive me. Not perfect posture. Um, okay. And uh, just be with yourself. And we're just gonna take a few moments to quickly tune into the sensations of our body, starting from the feet. Just paying attention to what your feet feel like. If it's difficult for you to get in touch with any part of your bodies, you just want to contract those muscles just a little bit and contract them in your feet and notice the sensations that arise. What can you observe? The temperature of your feet, the sensation of energy. Is it tingling? Is it solid? Is it heavy? Is it light? What's going on? And extend now from your feet, moving up now to your calves, your shins, and your knees. If you find it difficult to connect with those parts of the bodies, you can also use your hands to contact them. The body hears everything that we say, and so it realizes, okay, there is some kind of lack of awareness here, and through the, the power of our touch, we can connect with that body part. And moving up through your thighs, your bum, and when you, so when you focus on where your weight is resting, such as your bum, you really want to feel the contact, the contact with the chair, with the cushion, with the ground, feel how the ground supports you, how it rests, how you are resting and being held and supported by the ground. Moving up towards the lower back and the abdomen and the belly, just notice the sensations of breath in through the nose, down through the chest and into the belly. And notice, does your belly move when you breathe? Allow your breath to come naturally now. See if you can observe your breath without interference. If your stomach moves, notice it. If it doesn't, notice it as well. Absolutely fantastic, you're all doing great. And moving up now to the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the space over here where the rib cage um, ends. And uh, in a full breath, it should be expanding and contracting with the breath. And taking into account the sensations now spreading over the chest, the back, and the shoulders. <sighs> Feel yourself in your body. How am I experiencing this moment right here, right now? Ah, and spreading once again from the chest and the shoulders down through the arms, through the arms, through the wrists, the palms, and the fingers. Extend your awareness throughout your arms. And once again, just notice any sensations that you have the texture of your clothing, the temperature of your skin, the muscles, the joints, the skin. And now moving up to the shoulders. If you find it difficult to connect with your shoulders, a good tip is raise your shoulders and try and touch your ears. So like this, not, I'm, not, I'm not lowering my neck, I'm raising my shoulders and holding it tight and just drop them. And that works also if you have tense shoulders, you can just hold and ah, release with the breath. Ah, just put that weight down. It's not by coincidence that we say you have the weight of the world of your shoulders. Salip put Darek. This is definitely one of the places where most of us hold tension. So extending that awareness through the shoulders, through the neck, and up to our head. Ah. Does your head feel heavy? Does it feel light? Can you feel it balancing on your spine? And extending now, moving, I'm moving a little bit fast, guys. Do take your time to do this a bit more slowly um, at home. And 
again, you can totally do this in five minutes. I will say how later, but this is to do a poll. Like if you want to really take the time to, as Alessandra said, be the protagonist of your own well-being, you got to put in the time. Um, I would recommend at least 10 to 20 minutes daily, but I do understand that it might be very difficult for, for most people. So after I finish this, um, I'll do the short five minute version and that you can do like really, really quickly. So extending now your awareness to your entire body, feeling yourself as one complete whole unit. And when you get a sense of your body as a whole, focus on the breath, the cycle of the breath moving in through the nostrils, going down into the chest, the diaphragm, the belly, and releasing. And what you want to do is take your hands and put one on your belly and one over your heart. And just connect. Connect with those parts of your body. Over the heart and the gut, there are complex parts of your nervous system called ganglia, which signal feelings of safety to the brain. So by holding ourselves in these locations, we effectively tell our conscious it is safe. Connecting, feeling, becoming aware of these parts of our body you now say aloud to yourself, say aloud, it has a different effect. Say aloud to yourself, may I be well. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be happy. And sit and allow yourself to feel this metta, this loving kindness, this compassion that you too, no matter who you are or where you are, you deserve safety, well-being. You deserve love, care, and attention. If you would like to extend this, to make it longer, you can also bring to mind the image of someone you love, maybe a grandparent or a mother or father you can't see right now because of quarantine, picture them in your mind and say that same thing to them out loud. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be happy. <sighs> and that closes the exercise. So I do recommend doing this um, in 15 minutes, taking five minutes practicing the body scan, practicing, being aware, then five minutes focusing on the breath. If you find yourself getting distracted, no problem. Your thoughts are distracted. You bring your attention back to the breath, to the hair. And now it's gonna take practice. Meditation is kind of like uh, learning to ride a bike. You're gonna fall off the first couple of times, but that's no problem. You get back on there and you keep trying. Um, studies have shown that with as little as five to seven minutes per day, within three weeks, most people observe a noticeable difference in the quality of their thoughts and their day-to-day -day experience. So a little is better than nothing. If you want to do this in five minutes, I would recommend two minutes, two to three minutes for focusing on the body, then going into the breath, and then really taking that time to connect to the space over your heart and your belly. And you can, you know, self-soothe a little bit and tell yourself, really say, really mean it. It might feel a bit fake at first. I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it, people who haven't learned to love themselves without condition, which is most of us, it might feel a little fake at first, but that's completely normal. Fake it till you make it, guys. Um, so may I be safe. May I be well, may I be happy and uh, allow yourself to smile, to feel good and soothe yourself. You got to learn to be the parent to yourself that you always wanted. So um, I hope that you enjoyed um, 
the session with me today. Um, if you do have any other questions, uh, please post them in the comments below. Um, you can also join, um, you can go and like my page, Meditation for Mental Health, join the group Mental Health in Malta. And um, if you're one of those people who are either suffering or know someone who's suffering, um, uh, part of what I do is really believing in um, having an open dialogue about mental health. Um, but yeah, um, so if you enjoy this today and you really want to like, you know, show your gratitude, feel free to make a donation um, to Polaris to help us keep our business afloat because, you know, it's shut down for now and the details will be in the comment section below. And if you're interested in like online sessions, courses, etc., hit me up. Um, in my online courses, I actually go into a lot more detail about the different techniques that you can use, how to adapt meditation to your level. So some people can sit for two minutes in silence, other people just go nuts and they just have so many thoughts and they actually start feeling more anxious. So yeah, I can definitely teach you to adapt the techniques to what is comfortable and useful for you. And as well as going into the science and physiology um, behind it. So yeah, that was great. Thank you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. And now I am officially closing the first part of our Polaris Online Open Day. We're gonna have a half an hour break um, to eat some lunch, and then we will see you back after the break. So stay tuned guys, uh, just in case you can't be here for all the sessions. Do remember, all the sessions will be available until 10 o'clock at night. And then, you know, everything will be gone but we will keep you tuned with future secret activities over and out guys take care enjoy your day